Okay, we're working on the 2009 Ford Hybrid Escape. We'll get into different models that apply, but here's some tools that you'll need for removing the high voltage battery from the back of the car. Um, here, show the back of the car here real quick. Can you show here? So we're pulling this out, just giving you a quick rundown of what you need and how, it, how we're going to do it. Come on, back here. Thank you. All right, so Phillips head screwdriver, common head uh, screwdriver. We've got a 13 mil ratchet socket. We've got an 8 mil, a 10 mil. Uh, you've got a 6 mil uh, hex head. You don't need the security bit for this, but I'll show you where that goes. Um, this is what we needed to break the 6 mil head on the hex. We used a little cheater bar for extra leverage. If anybody knows that trick, here's your 13 mil bolt, your uh, security T30 hex bit, which holds in the top of the uh, battery protector, the metal. Uh, battery protector, your 8 mil screw, uh, little 10 mil uh, nut on the back. Okay, your 13 mil bolts, there are nine of them. You got one here, here, there are five along the back, here, four more across the back, and then you've got two more here and here. Those are the ones that physically mount the whole battery compartment to the frame of the vehicle. So here's another view of the five. These are on the front side of the compartment. Again, those are your 13 mils. Uh, you've also got a 10, I think it's a 10 mil and a 10 mil here that holds this bracket on top. You can see these holes that mount. We just pulled this back. Beneath this, you have a an orange plug that connects the battery pack to the electronics of the vehicle. Um, we'll take some close-ups, but basically there's a little lever in, in there. It's in the up position, it's locked. You pull it down to detach it, and then it actually crimps and latches to this when it's in the closed position. We'll get some close-ups of that later, but that was a little challenging, and it's got some really high gauge wires, so there's not a lot of play in there. Okay, so what we're doing uh, different than the other videos that I've seen, a lot of people are physically removing this battery out of the vehicle. This thing, this whole battery pack weighs 250 pounds, I think, but it's extremely hard. I've got back problems, knee problems, we all do, but we're gonna do this in place. So what we've done is we, once we unbolted everything, we used uh, basically a little pry bar and I took off this back piece here. Let me show you just because I don't want to scratch it and damage it. But this just snaps out. This is the cover that goes over the back. Remove that, this keeps from getting damaged. And uh, we basically just, and you can see, so you've got metal top and bottom, but you do have some plastic under here, and you can see we had to you know, ding that a, a smidgen. But basically we lift it up to a point, lift it up on the side. I stuck a couple little two by six chunks of wood to get it up to a certain position. And in the back, you can show it from back here, but I'll show you in the front. Now, you can see it from the back. Basically, I got my uh, tire buddy here, my little uh, sledgehammer handle was able to get it high enough and I levered it up. I used a two by four to get up underneath here and lift it. Now we've got a strap going from the two by four all the way underneath the battery pack. Uh, Cause the problem is we've taken all the perimeter bolts out, the top bolts, and then there are two hex heads. Okay, so here's your six mil uh, hex drive head. Again, you don't need the security bit. It just came with a kit. And there's the uh, inset for the Allen, Allen bolt. Uh, this bolt goes inside, unfortunately. So you can do all the surface stuff you can, but you still have to lift this out. And this is why most people are removing the battery system from the car to get into these side ones. But once you lift it up to a certain point, you just have to get over this lip. There's one of those bolts on the side here and one on the side here. So we were able to get it up high enough. Basically, here's a little ratchet system you need. And you do have a, a, a limitation in how much space you have here. So you're going to need something a little profile. That's why I just went with a little bit and a narrow little tool. Uh, this came with some furniture installation. I'm just lucky to have it. So those two now what we're finding out is there are two more Phillips heads I believe they're Phillips heads right back up in here so we have to lift this up even further so what we rigged up we were able to get this uh, strap up underneath on a 2x4 we're levering against the top and basically we're going to lift this up to get access to two more um, Phillips head screws on either side so we'll get close-ups of that here in a second so here's a close-up of that hex head I think it's a t30 hopefully it's a t30 the same as the ones on top um, but basically, I still need to get it. We've got it levered up, lifted. We just still need to lift it up another inch or two. So I'm going to make some adjustments here, and we'll get you some details. Okay, so we basically have this thing lifted. We've got another lever in here. Had to block up another side. We'll take a picture of that. Uh, but it is a T30, and this is a side screw. And between you guys, me, and the fence post, we probably aren't going to put this one back in in case I have to charge it again. I might not put these back side bolts in at all. So anyway, that's just between us. Uh, might not be board recommendation, manufacturer recommendation. But if we have to go through this procedure again, it'll keep us from having to do this baloney. Okay, here's that little T30 bit that was on the side. A uh, little screw. Pain in the butt to get that booger out. There's one on the other side. Almost done. Okay, this orange plug on under here, we're in the inside of the vehicle where the electric system plugs in. You can see um, two big prongs in here that latch into this orange plug uh, with the security lever. 
that latch on it. What I found is during all this hoisting, some of this weight was on this plug, so to protect that, I actually lifted up and put this, um, the seat of this end here, where the bolt, the frame, I put on a block of wood just to kind of make sure none of this stuff was damaging that plug, so keep that in mind. Okay, so basically we had this thing kind of blocked up in different places, so we just slid our strap and our our um, levering board over to the other side. And keep in mind when you're doing this, I want to keep it on this side of the the outlet here just so you don't get over to the end here because you have some ele electric plugs here and electric plugs there. So keep it on the insides here so it doesn't shift. We've got it propped up on an egg crate over here and we're just basically on this side trying to do the same thing, getting access to this T30 bit over here uh, to finish the top compartment removal. All right, so basically we got all the top bolts out and these side pane in the butts. Remember your six uh, mil hex head uh, over here and then we've got the T30 uh, stars or hex drive torx bit under here oh so we're lifting this up uh, we're at the point where we can ease this thing back down into its resting position um, now that we've propped this up and we've got kind of wood all over the place I'm just going to do a quick check up underneath make sure we don't have any lost screws nut drivers tools pieces of wood anything else and get this thing actually seated back into position again when we bolt this thing back together um, wink wink nod nod we will put these bolts back in on the sides but if you chose to leave them out probably outside of uh, manufacturer's recommendations, um, it would be a lot easier to go through this process. Again, you could just put this plate out, but uh, that's totally up to you and probably would avoid any warranties, but uh, that's probably what we're going to do. Okay, so here's this front main plug that connects the battery system to the front electronics of the car. See these little T, T slots here? They're gonna fit up around these bolts. So in this position, it's it's you can remove it, and then this locks it in place. So we're going to show you what, um, how to put it back. I didn't show you how to pull it off, but this will help. And again, if, can you see these? Show them these wires here. I think these are probably two gauge wires, two or four gauge wires. Uh, so that's basically where all the juice is going to the rest of the vehicle. So we're going to pull this back. Pretty difficult to move it around, and we had to be careful not to uh, to mess up anything. So we're just going to get it into position because now that we're lowering this, we need to not drop it on top of this. We're trying to put this in as we're lowering this battery pack back into position. And again, so you can see here, it'll slip in and then once we get into position, we'll actually push it this way and it'll lock. Okay, so we were able to successfully lower this, uh, pulling out our little wood supports and using a couple of levers. I ended up with two pieces of wood, basically. So we're kind of levering here and there and up in the front to get this thing kind of in a position. Again, protecting this plug so that this foot and all these pieces don't rest on top of it or damage it. So now you can see the difference between the bolt uh, pattern here and the actual bolt holes. We're about an inch off and if you can see too, we're about an inch from this um, plug uh, physically connecting in. So what we're gonna do real quick is slide this back so those holes match up and this uh, plug is seated and we will go ahead and secure it into place. Okay, and keep in mind too, as we're lifting this out, we want to make sure we get the strap out from underneath before we pull it out, pull out our last supports. Okay, so basically this is uh, the back end of what we were doing with all of our levering. Here's that little piece of two by six. And you know, we just had, this is kind of how we started propping things up. We put one here, got a little bit higher, used a two by four lever, lever, lever. Next thing you know, we're able to get our strap and our left li lever uh, strap um, system up to lift the battery up. Now we're lowering it down. But just be careful. Anytime you're lifting stuff like this, don't get your hands in a harmful way. If somebody's working with you, make sure they're in a crush point uh, area while you're lifting and they're stuck. So um, just a good safety tip. And now we're going to lower this thing back into place, make sure our bolt, bolt patterns line up, and we should be good to go ahead and we'll start opening up the top. Okay, so we did pull out our safety plug, which I'm not sure if we covered that, but here's our safety plug. Um, you can see the dimple lock unlock service. So basically we went from the lock position to unlock, pull this out, which is, you know, this secures the top end. So now that we pull this out, it's a little safer, safer system up underneath. And moment of truth, first time I'm pulling this off, but we've also seen them in the videos. Set this aside, make sure we don't drop any dirt or gunk in there. And there we go. We're getting access to our workable parts. Okay, so we've removed the battery control module or the brain or the computer, whatever it is, it sits in here. You've got four bolts or nuts, yeah, bolts that go in. There are two up here and two in the back. They are eight milliliter or millimeter, I believe. And uh, you have to pull the plugs off of some of them to get to it. I didn't detach the plugs on the back. We didn't really need to do that. Just ones on the front to lift it up and set it aside. Again, pay attention. Our plug, our safety plug is out. What this safety plug does, to my understanding, is it connects the two different panels. You got a top panel of batteries and a bottom panel of batteries. And basically we're treating it as a positive and negative, like a normal 12 volt battery under your hood. And with that safety fuse pulled, 
it's dis disconnecting the positive and the negative terminals. So when you get up over here to these electrical connections, that needs to be physically removed so that these connections aren't live and, and you have uh, both vulnerable uh, positive and negative terminals that are active. So even with that remove, I'm taking extra precautions to make sure that I don't connect any of these connections or short circuit any of those connections. So you're going to want to use your insulated tools, make sure you pull one screw at a time, set it aside, no jewelry, no wristwatches, things of that sort, because you're working around electricity and if these things short out, it's high voltage and it's very dangerous. That's why they, they tell a lot of people not to do this work. So it is very dangerous. Um, injury, death, know, know what you're doing, be very careful and keep your work area clean and don't store tools and things close. Put, I'm putting all my bolts separately. Um, I just don't want to have any short circuiting in here amongst these electrical connections. Okay, um, so we're at the point where we've pulled off the battery control module. Um, and this here is the connector piece. I'm not sure what they called it. Uh, converter maybe. But you see these two prongs here? There's a top prong, bottom prong. They go into these two parts. These two parts here are what feed the battery. We're going to charge these. Okay, so this is the battery charger. We'll give you the link. Um, I learned this from Godfrey's video. You guys will probably check that out. I might reference it. Uh, but basically it comes with two exposed ends. One's the output with just a positive and negative output. The input side's got three. So you've got your green, your brown, and your blue. There's a little key here on the on the uh, device that tells you the color, co the coating. But we basically just had to buy this male three prong plug to, to connect it. So we'll connect our extension cord to that. Now on this end, what, I, what we're gonna do is uh, basically I just got some round electrical connection right and you can see what I did is clipped them and bent them out and what I'm trying to do is make them about the same size as these same size as these could you get a close-up of that see that so basically what we're trying to do is just create a plug here that's going to mimic these right both sides top and bottom and we're going to stick them in here and that's what's going to charge okay uh, we wanted to go ahead and code these for you guys so the safety plug is here again at the back where the Orange top goes in, the orange safety plug goes in here. So I'm referencing opposite of the, of the safety plug. So opposite of the safety plug is where we're going to be charging. The top is negative and the bottom is positive. So again, we're gonna make these, these connections and basically we're gonna stick them in here underneath and we're gonna put those, we're gonna bolt those in and we'll be able to charge directly. So it looks like that plug's gonna work out really well. Um, and we'll show you what all this looks like here soon. Okay, we ended up improvising a plug to put inside these sockets. See here, these little spade terminals that are part of this uh, connector piece here. There's the bottom one, which is gonna be negative. The top one's gonna be positive. But basically, we created, and I just had some 12-3 lying around the house, uh, so I uh, made a little piece, um, spun them together, and then I put my alligator clip, put a bare end in there, wrapped it around, didn't solder it. This is just kinda quick and dirty, and we'll check to make sure we've got continuity, continuity and good connections. But as you can see down here, I've already installed the positive on the bottom. I've got a red alligator clip for that. And we're basically going to insert the uh, negative one in here. Make that connection. I'll install the bolt. And we're going to make sure we keep these pieces apart from each other. Again, we're going to treat those like a positive and negative terminal. And then we're going to tighten this up and go ahead and run the meter here in a second. Okay, so we've got our uh, voltmeter here. We're using a Sperry DSA 500. Um, I've got my negative and positive connected again, negatives up at the top. And so we made those little connections. So here's my wire with my alligator clip going to my negative lead to the voltmeter. And I'm going to take the positive and we're going to connect to the positive here. Now the bolt's not conductive, but the the uh, the spade connector below it, similar spade connector in this piece, we're going to reach all the way back, touch that metal, and let's see what we get. We're at 156 volts. So that tells me the top system's 156 volts. I think it should be about 170 or 80, uh, which puts us to like 360, somewhere voltage, 350, 360 volts, so 175, 180. Um, so that one's a little bit low. We're not gonna be able to check the bottom one because I can't get to the bottom terminal back here. But what we are going to do is insert our safety switch. And while we do this, again, we wanna make sure that we have everything out of the way, no connections, no short circuiting potentials in between these these uh, positive and negatives because once we turn this in, we are starting to connect those uh, those live components and um, getting into that high voltage situation. So just be very careful. So we're going to go ahead, double check, look away real quick, Jet. Okay, we're good. So the system's live now. We have negative to the negative, 
Uh, we're not going to use the positive right now, but I'm going to go negative top to, to positive top here, and let's see what we get across the top. Is this correct here? No, we're actually going to go across the bottom. So let me run back and check that. Okay, so basically we're going to check again. So we did negative and positive across the top. Now with this safety plug-in, both battery systems are connected together. So now we're going to check the total voltage. So again, we have the negative connected to the same negative on the top one. I'm going to go to the positive on the bottom one, which with this plug, it's connecting the circuit. So both boards are together. So let's go ahead and connect this, making sure everything's separate. Okay, yeah, see here we're at 295 volts, 296 volts. So that's low. Uh, system should be about 360, 380. I'll double check that. I, I hear it's a 350 to 400 volt system. So either way, that's low. Hopefully that's what's causing our no start um, condition. And let's double check here real quick. So this is still live. I want to make sure these connections don't go, don't, don't, uh, don't touch each other. Very, very important. And we're going to go ahead and check the voltage out of our um, charger right now. So blue is negative, brown is positive. So blue negative. I've got the positive. Uh, brown is positive. So I'm going to connect here and I'm going to connect here and let's see what kind of voltage we're getting from our meter or our, our charger. We're at 431 volts. It's a 430 volt charger. So that thing's good. So let's go ahead and connect this up and see what um, if we can get this thing on charge. Okay, so basically we're connected and charged. We're plugged in. We've got our charger connected. Uh, red is going to be positive on the negative side over here. Um, black is going to uh, negative on the top. We've got our safety plug in so both boards are connected. We've got the high voltage. And if you see, we've only been charging for a couple minutes. We started at 296 volts. We're already up to 302. 300, we'll see here. So it is charging, it's working. We're going to keep this connected for a few hours. And see, I've heard between six and eight hours, but it looks like it's actually progressing quite nicely. Um, and we'll just keep you posted. And I'm also being careful here too, since I'm not going to be sitting here watching this for several hours, but we do want to make sure that the, there is some separation between these two pieces so we don't short out and then cause any damage or sparks or fire or anything. So just keep your eye on that, be safe, and um, we'll check back, see what our voltage, our voltage is still climbing. Okay, basically we're done. So we did get our charger up to 350 volts, about 351. I waited for it to max out. I wasn't sh quite sure, I, I couldn't find published voltage uh, for the 2009 Ford Hybrid Escape anywhere. It said 300 plus in multiple places, but uh, 350 seems to be the magic number. That would be 175 and 175 volts per bank, top bank, bottom bank. Um, so our lock's in, we put everything back, um, we started it, everything's good to go. I, I did want to point this out, this is a fan system for cooling. This side here is sucking in, this side here is blowing out, and that's what, that's what feeds the vent air intake and exhaust from the side of the car here. Uh, I did see once in a video that somebody said these fans fail all the time. I was concerned mine, mine might have failed, but before I put everything back together, I went ahead and tried it and started it, and it worked, and I was surprised at how loud these fans were. So if, if these are working and your car is running great, if not, you might need to replace those fans too. Um, ours are good here. And listen, if you can listen to the noise difference, I'd never heard it before, but it's really quiet once you put the shroud on. So anyway, uh, we're done. Money saved, mission accomplished. Uh, just off the top of my head, a couple of things to think about while you are putting these components back in over here. Uh, there are a lot of little nooks and crannies, so when you're sticking those little bolts and, and nuts and such uh, back in those pockets, I dropped one and I had to fish it out with a magnet, uh, one of the little telescoping magnets. So uh, just be careful, don't get here yet. Uh, just so you don't get in a rush. Um, and remember, there are some exposed electrical parts in there, so uh, you, you want to be extra ca cautious. Uh, kind of in a rush at the back end of the job, but just take, take your time putting those screws in so you don't lose any. And uh, one other thing too, um, I did forget to put these two side pieces on. Remember we had these large hex head bolts in the side here, and then we had a small Phillips head uh, up in the side here. Um, out of convenience, I, I kind of overlooked it, but uh, in hindsight, it'll be easier for me to take these out in the future. I wouldn't recommend doing that. It might be a safety precaution to have those in. But either way, next time I have this problem, I won't have to go through the whole rigmarole of lifting this up the way we did. I can just remove these bolts, access that, and it'll turn a five-hour job into maybe about 45 minutes. So anyway, thanks. Be careful.